friends, and welcome to my channel. Today we are going to turn this old and boring patio door into a beautiful French door, as well as a makeover of the surrounding area. Before we start, a little background about my house. We bought this place in 2009. At that time, we were both working overseas. We viewed this house while we were in the States visiting family. This house was a foreclosure and the price was really great. The place was built in the early 80s and mostly everything was original. Even though it was foreclosed, everything was kept up well and in decent condition. I fell in love with this place right after a house tour. And yes, it needs a lot of updates, but it has many of the essentials. I love the unique floor plan, very high ceilings with gorgeous solid wood, two balconies and one patio. After we bought this place, we continued working overseas for a few more years then came back to the States. Unfortunately, we couldn't get jobs near our home, so we both ended up getting jobs in a different city. We had to choose between a 4 hour each day commute or a rent apartment close to our work. We went with the second choice, stay in the apartment during the weekdays and only come back home on the weekends and the holidays. So this house was mostly empty until we fully moved back last year. I started updating our guest bathroom during the quarantine. I did a complete renovation mostly by myself. If you haven't seen that video, I will link it down below for you. I'll be updating our entire house section by section. So if you're new to my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and also hit the notification bell. That way you will be notified every time I upload a video. These patio doors are the original pieces, which means they are almost 40 years old. I don't want to replace them right now, maybe ahead someday. For now, I want to give these regular glass doors a little more character. And today I'm going to show you how to make a full French door. I first spray painted all the metal part door frames by using Rust-Oleum Matte Black. It does have a very strong smell, so make sure to always wear a respirator to protect yourself. I usually spray paint items outside, but if you must paint it indoors, make sure to have good air ventilation. As these doors are in very bad shape, I had to remove them so I can really work on them. I first used the wood filler to fill all the gaps, holes and the cracks. The filler I'm using is actually for finish the wood. It's colored to match the wood stain. I only have this on hand and it works well for all purposes. But you can get a speckle or wood putty and those should work as well. When you fill the gap or hole, you can use a small putty knife or just use your finger like I do. Don't just cover it, you want to press the filler into it to fill as much as you can, then wait until it's dry, then use a piece of sandpaper to smooth it out. This door is weathered very much, I needed to sand the whole surface before painting, so I used 100 gray sandpaper first then 220. It's going to be very dusty so you want to wear proper protection to protect yourself while sanding. After sanding, I used a damp towel to clean all the dust off. So here you can see the difference between before and after sanding. To give these doors a better bond of paint, I decided to use a primer before painting. 
The primer I got from Lowe's. The brand is a Volspar. Before painting the wall, I always use a joint compound to patch all the nail holes and the chips. If you've never done this before, it's actually very easy. Just use a small putty knife to press the putty into the cavity. After it's dry, then use a piece of sandpaper to smooth the surface up. The paint I bought from Lowe's. It's a Volspar brand and the color is du jour. If I pronounced that correctly. The current wall is a beige white color. I change it to pure white. I used to paint our walls in a flat finish, but this time I tried the eggshell finish, and I think it looks better than the flat. I got this high density foam roller from Home Depot. If you are a beginner to painting, I highly recommend this roller, as it really helps with the smooth, even coats. The reason I always choose a small size roller is because the walls I have are textured, and I must press the roller hard so the paint can get into the textures. I don't have enough strength to control the bigger roller for an even coat, so the small one is much easier for me. If you have a smooth wall surface, I suggest you to get a bigger roller. That will make the whole process much faster. After the wall is done, I painted the doors with the Sherwin Williams Satin Black. The color is called the Tricorn, and I did the two coats. I went to Home Depot and bought three pieces of a pine trim from the molding section. I needed two pieces in 60 inches length and 16 pieces in 10 and a half inches length. Then I need to attach the side trim to the middle trim by using Gorilla Glue. I choose to use clear glue as it can be seen through from the other side of glass doors. When you glue the trim together, make sure to use a level or speed square to ensure everything is nice and straight. Once the glue is fully cured, I painted all the trim in the same color I used for the doors. After everything had dried, I applied the glue on the back of all the trim, then used my finger to spread it evenly and wipe off any excess. Then gently put the trim on the door glass. I'm pretty sure about my previous measurements, so that makes it much easier to position it. 
I use painter's tape to help secure the trim on the glass until the glue is fully cured. I intended to hang the new curtains much higher than the height of doors, so the space would look much bigger and brighter. I bought these curtains from Amazon on Prima Day. These are the linen blended fabric. The color is off-white, and the size is 52 inches wide by 96 inches in height. I paid around $24 for the pair. I bought a total of 7 pairs as I'm planning to remove all the window shades and replace them with the curtains for the entire house. I used 220 gray sandpaper sent down the lock set first, then spray painted them with the rest matte black, so the color would match the doors. I ordered this 5 feet tall artificial ficus tree from Macy's last week, and it just arrived yesterday. The original price was $126 and was on sale for $44, which I think is a very good price. The only issue is this pot is too small compared with the size of the tree. I got this large ceramic pot from Ross. It was $15.99. I like the pots from Ross. They are mostly handmade from Southeast Asia. And this one says handmade in Vietnam. I got six or seven of them together. I placed them everywhere around the house and they look great. This one, unfortunately, when I was unloading from the car, slipped through my hands and got broken on the bottom. So it's been in my garage for a long time. I want to try to fix this pot today so the ficus tree can stand in it. I'm using the same glue I used for the door trim. The instructions say it also works on ceramic atoms. After glue is cured, I wrapped this all-purpose sparkling paste on the pot until it's fully covered. When the paste gets a little harder and almost dry, I started using my bare hand to dip in some water and rub the surface to help getting it smoother. And after it's completely dried, use a 220 grit sand sponge for a nice smooth finish. I'm going to use some of the paints I have on hand to make this pot look like a really aged stone pot. I basically just played around with these two Wibberly chalk paint colors. For the light color called the Nimbus, I mixed it with a couple of acrylic paints to get the color close to the light sand. I did one coat of light color paint, then mixed some water with the Wibberly's dark ink color. 
I didn't use much of a paint. It's almost like a dark colored water. I'm not gonna brush paint it on, but only dip the paper towel with a little bit of dark paint and gently tap it down to the pot. If you think anywhere you did too much, you can always use the paper towel dip in with the clear water to tap it off. We drink black tea all the time, so I just grabbed the two used tea bags and got the tea powder out, mixed it with some ginger powder and water, then using the same technique, gently tap it down to the pot. This will create some textures and layers for the natural stone effects. You can repeat this process until you get the desired results. That's it for this time guys. Today we have reviewed how to make over these old weathered patio doors into lovely looking French doors. We also turned the plain looking plant pot into lovely stone looking tree pot. Please let me know how you think about this makeover. Any comments would be highly appreciated. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you all next time.